Welcome to John Redmond, Power of Attorney. This is a special web-only segment, a lanyap segment with a good friend, Chris Bruno, Judge, Civil District Court, Division, excuse me, Division F. And um, he is continuing his discussion with us about what happens in Orleans Parish Civil District Court. Um, Chris, I want to get into some practical tips that you might be able to share with litigants, people who are already in court or they're likely to be in court if they end up in front of you or any other judges there. Um, what are some, what are just some, some obvious things you think people ought to think about or consider doing to help move their case forward in a proactive way? Well, one of the things I, I, I always tell lawyers is that use the court. I mean, we are, we're public servants. We're here to serve you and your clients. So I say if you have a dispute that comes up, now careful, you've got to be careful. You can't contact and talk to the judge about fact, but you can call a judge and say, can we set a status conference up ex parte? You can do that. And the judge says, sure, get, file your motion. So one of the things I think lawyers don't use is the judge to help assist set orders to, to um, assist in disputes, small disputes, deposition issues that come up. You know, you take a deposition, you're questioning a witness, something comes up during the deposition. Call the judge if there's an issue. Right, in other words, you and the other lawyer disagreeing about whether or not uh, the witness has to answer a question. Some judges, and you're one of the judges, you say, that's fine, call up the, the both, both sides together can call the judge and say, we have a disagreement, I say, Yes, he says no. Judge, can you help resolve the dispute? And if you're not too busy, you'll you'll solve the issue right then and there. Absolutely. And if it's not an issue that you know, sometimes it can be complex, and lawyers get a little hesitant because of the the finality of the ruling. But you know, again, the goal is to move this matter forward, and if that assists those lawyers, then it should be done. Yeah. And so, scheduling conferences where you want to get the judge's involvement in, in moving the case, getting a trial date, getting cutoff dates for concluding preliminary matters. Yeah, and, and and let me just say thank you for that that uh, making that suggestion. I happen to be one of the people in the choir uh, that you're preaching to on that. I absolutely agree, and I have absolutely uh, taken advantage of that advice. I've uh, over the years learned uh, from lawyers who suggested it to me and judges who suggested it to me. And frankly, when I was a law clerk, I, I saw the judge that I clerked for uh, do the very same thing. Um, you call the judge and you say help us out. We're, you know, we're at an impasse and uh, these judges who have that humble spirit, they say, well, we're, we're here to serve. Come see me. And if the parties agree to go see the judge, the judge can help uh, resolve uh, some issues and and move the case forward. Maybe get it resolved. Right, right. In fact, in in, in a jury trial setting, it's, it, you sometimes will have a judge be involved with trying to assist them in resolving it, provided their clients are well informed and available to communicate with and consent to it. So yeah, actually settle the yes, case. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I absolutely uh, appreciate the judge's insight on that too because who better than the judge in that division who, have seen, who has seen so many juries come and sit in that very same courtroom and address similar types of cases over the years and of course that's not the same as a crystal ball and everybody agrees it is by no means uh, a uh, reliable indicator, but it is a something to consider if the judge says if plaintiff proves A, B, and C and plaintiff's witnesses are credible, then you might have this type of result. But if defendant proves X, Y, and Z and defendant's witnesses are credible, then you might have this situation. But just having that, uh, that wise counsel of the judge uh, lets both parties go back to their clients and say, this is new information to consider. Well, we also very careful that we, we only in response to a request, because I don't mandate that they have a settlement discussion with me. I like them to be the ones that say, you really want this, your clients want this, I'm more than willing to assist you. Right, it right. is absolutely not, you're right. not, playing the dictator, right. you're playing the, uh, the person who responds to the joint request. Right. Or if one side requests it and the other, and, and then you tell that requester, tell your opponent uh, about it, and if your opponent agrees, then I'll sit down with you. Is that a fair statement? That's a fair statement. Okay. Well, we're, we're short on time here. Let's, let's change gears. Let's go to a new topic. Um, um, 
before you sat on the bench, you had been in front of many judges. Uh, you practiced for many years. You tried a lot of cases. Then you sat on the bench. Now that you've been on the bench for a number of years, what do you find uh, is a common, one or two common misconceptions that you find the public has about what judges do on the bench? Well, a lot of that, and I think the biggest mis um, the misperception is, I think comes from a lot of these daytime judge shows, is that judges wear their robes all day long and sit on the bench, <laughs> which is, as you, as you know, as a practicing attorney, uh, not many cases make it to trial, uh, which is important. why it's important for the judge to be available, because we do a lot of motions, what they call challenges to the legal theories, uh, requesting that a lawyer answer discovery. So we get voluminous, or layman's terms, big stacks of documents that we have <laughs> yeah. to read, and we all have rule days on Fridays. We have rule days. I have them every Friday. Because except you have to make rulings yeah. on You've rule got days. a rule ahead of time, so we'll have to read thousands, they'll attach thousands of pages of documents, and the judge has to uh, read through those with the assistance of a law clerk, and has to make the decisions to, to, to decide whether a case could even go forward. Right. So you can dismiss a case uh, Early, right. if it doesn't have the correct allegation or can't. So prove there's that a lot of skirmishes before the main battle, which is yes. trial on the merits. And so, uh, very often in a case, uh, uh, the defendant is going to try and get the plaintiff's case, the, the let's say it's an injury case, the injured party's case thrown out because they don't have the right to sue, or they file their case too late. They had only a year to file suit and they waited more than a year to file suit. Or maybe they sued the wrong party. They should have sued, you know, ABC company, but they actually sued EFG company. Uh, all these different reasons why uh, they're going to argue that the lawsuit should be thrown out. So you'll handle arguments like that. Absolutely. You know, you also have your, your, your uh, rules that require quick settings. Temporary restraining orders have to be heard and preliminary injunctions have to be heard expeditiously in a quick manner. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's all kinds of procedural mechanisms that require you to do this. We, we handle, you know, we didn't talk about this, succession proceedings, right. we handle that, quite that a few takes, of those. Yeah. And that's a special area of the law. So you have to be aware and, and knowledgeable about everything that is contained in right. every and book so that you have And so much of that work there. and so much of that preparation isn't you sitting in the courtroom at that uh, at that bench in front of the the rows of chairs, you're actually in your office, what we call the chambers, uh, working at your desk. Absolutely, and you, you have to prepare for those, so you don't spend much time when you actually finish prepare, preparing and ruling on the motions, but you do spend a lot beforehand. The other thing that we do, you know, judges write their reasons. So we have to give reasons why we're ruling, so you have to write reasons for judgment. And so a lot of our time is spent writing those reasons. And you, know, and you have to be consumed by that case. You can't do 10 different things, but we often do because we have to. So you know, there's very little time spent, but when we're in a jury trial, what happens in a jury trial, a 10-day jury trial is that everything else is stalled. Wow. So when you're trying a jury trial, everybody else's case is on hold. So that pushes the system, that, that delays those cases. So when you have a jury trial in, in our court, Guess what? Everything's on hold. Well, uh, you bring up the excellent related point of how, how the public, people who normally don't have to interact with lawyers, judges, when they are in an accident or injury uh, situation and they come see somebody like me or, uh, at my firm or at, at somebody at Bruno and Bruno or other firms, and, and they might have expectations from watching these crazy television shows and they think everything's over and done with in half an hour and they get a quick check uh, and it's uh, it does a disservice it's a disservice and it also they, those judges are very disrespectful to the litigants and that's one thing judges have to watch is that they have to be respectful that someone is having their day in court and we talked about unrepresented parties yeah. there's nothing worse than a judge lashing out at an unrepresented party because yeah. and again they're presumed to know the rules but even with lawyers we have to be respectful when you watch those TV shows they're yelling at the litigants yeah. they're telling them to shut up which would just be, that, would never be said by a judge in our, our court, would be sanctionable. are supposed to prevent that. Yes. I'm not going to name names, but let me tell you, there are judges here who forget, in this state who sometimes forget they are public servants, and, uh, and uh, uh, there's, um, there are watchdog organizations out there, and I hope one day that they'll make that an objective to make good manners of some of these judges an issue, because I have seen judges mistreat other lawyers, and pro se litigants or unrepresented litigants because you are public servants and 
darn it, you need to remember that. And if you can't mind your P's and Q's, you have no business being a, an elected leader up there on the bench. Okay. But, but again, you set the example, you make this case right here today, and I'm glad to hear you say that. So thank you. Again, we're, we're out of time, Judge. Oh, thank you so much, Chris, for being with us. I it's been a it. real pleasure. It's been another education here on John Rebin, Power of Attorney. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope you're gonna stay with us. Join us on these webcasts. Join us on our TV show. See you real soon.